Hello, welcome to this lesson on the equivalence of mass and energy and the equation E equals mc squared. We'll start by saying a few words about matter and mass and then a few words about energy. Then we can talk about how mass and energy are equivalent, really different forms of the same thing. And the equation E equals mc squared expresses this. We'll then do a couple of calculations and we'll use joules as the energy unit and we'll do a calculation using electron volts as the energy unit. So you want a pen, paper and calculator so you can have a go at the calculations for yourself. Let's make a start by talking about matter and mass. Now matter is one of those ill-defined quantities. There's no exact definition of it. Normally we think of matter as stuff, substance. So that's a picture of a pebble. That's an example of matter. And matter could be solid, a liquid or a gas. Could be other things as well, such as plasma you may have heard of. Particles can be considered as matter, providing the particles have a rest mass. That means they've got some mass when they're not moving. So electrons, protons, neutrons, for example, they have some mass even when they're not moving, so they're categorized as matter. And things made from electrons, protons, and neutrons, such as this pebble, are also matter. Something like a photon has no rest mass. A photon has zero rest mass. So a photon is not a particle with a rest mass. A photon is not matter. A photon is an example of energy. What is mass? Well, the normal way of thinking about mass is resistance to acceleration. If you've got an elephant, you've got a mouse, if you apply the same force to each, the elephant accelerates far less than the mouse. So we can think about mass as being resistance to acceleration. The mass of the elephant is much bigger than the mass of the mouse. It resists acceleration more. And we normally take the mass of an object as a way to measure the amount of matter it contains. So the amount of matter is the mass and the SI unit, as I'm sure you know, is a kilogram. There are other units you might encounter. For example, we may sometimes use, uh, use atomic mass units, AMU or U. Sometimes we use strange looking units like these, MEV per C squared, but don't worry about those at the moment. Just deal in terms of kilograms. What about energy? Well, it's even worse than matter. It's even harder to define. There are two basic categories of energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of a mass if it's moving, and potential energy is the energy stored, for example, gravitational potential energy or, or electrical potential energy. Other forms of energy are basically mixtures of these. For example, sound waves in air. It's really kinetic energy. The sound energy is actually the kinetic energy of the moving air particles. Electromagnetic energy, for example, the energy in a photon, is really potential energy. It's the potential energy in the electric and magnetic fields. There are many other forms of energy. We're not going to be talking about them. We're mainly going to be considering photons, which are a form of electromagnetic energy. I'm sure you know the SI unit of energy is the joule, small j in full, or single capital J as a symbol. There are other units you can use for energy the electron volt, small e capital V, the calorie, just as a couple of examples. It turns out that matter and energy, although they seem very, very different, we normally say the universe is made of matter and energy, they are actually different forms of the same thing. And it goes back to 1905 when Einstein published what we now call the special theory of relativity. One of the things to come out of this theory was that matter and energy are basically the same. So when you hold a pebble in your hand, you're basically holding 
a lot of energy concentrated into a small space. And we can think of matter, such as a pebble, we could say matter is energy concentrated in a small space. It's very, very tightly packed and we experience it as something which is solid, for example. It turns out that matter, as we normally think of it, can, can be converted to energy as we normally think of it. And we can go the other way, we can convert energy to matter. You're probably already familiar with matter being converted to energy. It's how a star produces so much energy, like our sun. It's converting matter into energy. Something like an atomic bomb or a nuclear power station also uses this concept. It actually changes matter into energy. You can go the other way. You can go from energy to matter. It's rather more difficult. Later on, you'll learn about a process called perproduction, where energy is turned to matter. Let's talk about this very famous formula, probably the most famous formula in physics, E equals mc squared. It relates energy in an object to its mass. Let's make sure we know what the symbols mean and what the units are. Working in the SI system, E means the energy contained in an object, the total energy which makes it. We measure it in joules. M is in kilograms and is the mass of the object. And C is the speed of light, about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, to understand it fully, it's best to actually use the formula. So let's do a couple of practice calculations to start. Here's the first one, and I'd like you to have a go for yourself. So, I'll read it out. Suppose two grams of water, that could be any substance at all, two grams of water could be completely converted to energy. That's very difficult to do, but let's just suppose somehow or other we could completely convert this two grams of water to energy. How much energy would be produced? There's a value of C. Pause the video, have a go for yourself. Well, I hope you've tried it. It's fairly straightforward. There's a formula, which I'm sure you can remember. Put the numbers in. Got to be careful with the units. The mass is not two kilograms, it's two grams. So we've got to convert two grams into kilograms. Well, that's 0 0.002. We divide two by a thousand and it converts it to kilograms. So it's 0 0.002 kilograms, that's the mass, and we multiply it by 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. In fact, 3 times 10 to the 8 squared is 9 times 10 to the 16. So we could save ourselves a bit of work by multiplying 0 0.002 by 9 times 10 to the 16. And if we do that, we'll get 1.8 times 10 to the power 14 joules. Don't forget the units. Now that's a huge amount of energy just from 2 grams of water if there was some clever way to actually do it. It's very difficult to do. N another question. Let's go the other way. Suppose you're given 9 gigajoules of energy and it can be converted into matter somehow. What mass would be produced from this 9 gigajoules of energy? If you can't remember, let me remind you, Giga, capital G, means 10 to the power 9. Pause the video, have a go. Let's go through it. We know e equals mc squared, but we want the mass. Let's rearrange e equals mc squared, and it gives the mass is the energy divided by c squared. We know the energy is 9 gigajoules, that's 9 times 10 to the power 9 joules. And we're going to, going to divide that by c squared, which is 3 times 10 to the power 8 squared, or 9 times 10 to the 16. Don't really need a calculator, you can do it in your head. It's 1 times 10 to the minus 7 kilograms. That's a very small mass, it's like a small speck of dust. So this quite large amount of energy, if you could turn it into mass, would produce a very small speck of dust. Let's do one more and then we're done. For this one I'm going to use the electron bolt. Now you may or may not have met this special unit the electron bolt. I'm not going to explain what it 
how it originates, but you should know that one electron bolt, symbol small d capital V, is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now you may recognize that number. It's the same number as the charge on an electron or proton in coulombs, and that's no coincidence. But all you need to know for present purposes is one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. If you can't remember the speed of light, there it is. Here's the question. A photon has a photon energy of 1.02 MeV. If this photon could be converted to two equal mass particles, what would be the mass of each particle? Pause the video, have a go. I hope you've tried it. Well, if we're going to make two particles from this single photon, each particle must be made from half of the energy. So each particle is made from 1.02 MeV divided by 2, which is 0.51 MeV. That's mega electron volts. You know, at mega is 10 to the 6. So if we're going to use our equation e equals mc squared, we are going to have to convert this energy in MeV into joules. So let's do that. 0.51 MeV. Well, it's 0.51 times 10 to the 6 EV. It's 0.51 times a million electron volts, because that's what mega, capital M, means. And to convert that number of electron volts to joules, we're going to have to multiply by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And if you do that, you'll end up with 8.16 times 10 to the minus 14 joules. That's the amount of energy in joules that makes up one of the particles. And now we can use this formula, rearranged equals mc squared. m is e over c squared, 8.16 times 10 to the minus 14 over 3 times 10 to the 8 squared should give you 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. I hope you got the answer. And if you've done a few calculations in the past, you may recognize this number. This number is roughly the mass of an electron. So what this is saying is this energy photon, this a photon this big, if it could be converted into two particles of equal mass, the particles would have the mass, each have the mass of an electron. And it turns out this is possible. You can produce a particle and an antiparticle from this photon, an electron and its antiparticle, which is called a positron. And when you learn about particles and antiparticles, this will make more sense. The mass of each particle is 9.1, 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, which is the same as the mass of an electron. Okay, well, I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.